This video is titled Martin Luther King Jr. was an image created by the federal government. Before starting this video, I must say that my iPhone is being tampered with and someone is watching my every word somehow. I'm not joking. I received notifications of another device being used on my notepad account and I don't have another device. But the information must be released no matter the consequences. Going straight in. Before I get into why, I will give a brief history of the person that's referred to as Martin Luther King Jr. Any thinking man, woman, or child will be able to discern how the history will give birth to the conclusion. Martin Luther King Jr. was born in 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. King, a Baptist minister and civil rights activist, had a seismic impact on race relations in the United States beginning in the mid-1950s. Among his many efforts, King headed the Southern Christian Leadership Conference through his activism and inspirational speeches. He played a pivotal role in ending the legal segregation of African-American citizens in the United States, as well as the creation of of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. King received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964, among several other honors. He was assassinated in April 1968 and continues to be remembered as one of the most influential and inspirational African American leaders in history. In his early years, Martin Luther King was born as Michael King Jr. I got to pause. Who knew that Martin Luther King's name was not Martin Luther King? He was born as Michael King Jr. on January 15, 1929. Martin Luther King Jr. was the middle child of Michael King Sr. and Alberta Williams King. The King and Williams families were rooted in rural Georgia. Martin, Martin Jr.'s grandfather, A.D. Williams, was a rural minister for years and then moved to Atlanta in 1893. He took over the small struggling Ebenezer Baptist Church with around 13 members and made it into a forceful congregation. He married Janine Celeste Parks and they had one child that survived, Alberta. Michael King Sr. came from a sharecropper family in a poor farming community. He married Alberta in 1926 after an eight-year courtship. The newlyweds moved to A.D. Williams' home in Atlanta. Michael King Sr. stepped in as pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church upon the death of his father-in-law in 1931. He, too, became a successful minister and adopted the name Martin Luther King Sr. in honor of the German Protestant religious leader Martin Luther. In due time, Michael Jr. would follow his father's lead and adopt the name himself. Martin Sr. was more the disciplinarian, while his wife's gentleness easily balanced out the father's more strict hand. Though they undoubtedly tried, Martin Jr.'s parents couldn't shield him completely from racism. Martin Luther King Sr. fought against racial prejudice, not just because his race suffered, but because he considered racism and segregation to be an affront to God's will. He strongly discouraged any sense of class superiority in his children, which left a lasting impression on Martin Jr. In 1948, Martin Luther King Jr. earned a sociology degree from Morehouse College and attended the liberal Crosser Theological Seminary in Chester, Pennsylvania. He thrived in all his studies and was valedictorian of his class in 1951. Elected student body president, he also earned a fellowship for graduate study. But Martin also rebelled against his father's more conservative influence by drinking beer and playing pool while at college. He became involved with a white woman and went through a difficult time before he could break off the affair. During his last year in seminary, Martin Luther King Jr. came under the guidance of Morehouse College President Benjamin E. Mays, who influenced King's spiritual development. Mays was an outspoken advocate for racial equality and encouraged King to view Christianity as a potential force for social change. That's a key factor. 
after being accepted at several colleges for his doctoral study, including Yale and Edinburgh in Scotland, King enrolled at Boston University. In 1954, while still working on his dissertation, King became pastor of the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church of Montgomery, Alabama. He completed his Ph.D. and earned his degree in 1955. King was only 25 years old. See, 1955 is the year Rosa Parks' bus incident happened on December. In December 1955, King was put at a lead role in organizing and leading the bus boycott because at the time, Negroes, or whatever name they called us, Southern niggas at the time, LOL, we all indigenous, but we all think we know of that incident so so well, so I'll skip it for now. Moving along, in January 1957, Martin Luther King Jr., Ralph Abernathy, and 60 ministers and civil rights activists founded the Southern Christian Leadership Conference to harness the moral authority and organizing power of black churches. They would help conduct nonviolent protests to promote civil rights reform. They would con- they would help conduct nonviolent protests to promote civil rights reform. They was promoting that shit. King's participation in the organizing gave him a base of operation throughout the South. You hear that? Base of operation throughout the South. That's government talk. That's Fed talk. As well as a national platform. That mean they want to be, he, he got to be heard nationally. The organization felt the best place to start to give African Americans a voice was to enfranchise them in the voting process. In February 1958, the SCLC sponsored more than 20 mass meetings in key southern cities to register black voters in the South. King met with religious and civil rights leaders and lectured all over the country on race-related issues. This is a key right here because this is a fact that is little known that took place after the sit-in arrest on October 19th. Martin Luther King was on probation. King was in prison for violating his probation on a traffic conviction. The news of his imprisonment entered the 1960 presidential campaign. Now remember, he already played a key role in getting people to sign up to vote. Now, look at this. The news of his imprisonment entered the 1960 presidential campaign when candidate John F. Kennedy made a phone call to Coretta Scott King. Kennedy expressed his concern for King's harsh treatment for the traffic ticket and political pressure was quickly set in motion. King was soon released. See, that political pressure is is a a tantamount moving force in America. In the spring of 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. organized a demonstration in downtown Birmingham, Alabama. Entire families attended. City police turned dogs and firehouse hoses on demonstrators. Martin Luther King was jailed along with large numbers of his supporters, but the event drew nationwide attention. However, King was personally criticized by black and white clergy alike for taking risks and endangering the children who attended the demonstration. From the jail in Birmingham, King eloquently spelled out his theory of nonviolence. Nonviolence direct action seeks to create such a crisis and foster such attention that a community which has constantly refused to negotiate is forced to confront the issue. By the end of the Birmingham campaign, Martin Luther King Jr. and his supporters were making plans for a massive demonstration on the nation's capital composed of multiple organizations all asking for peaceful change. On October, I mean on August 28, 1963, the historic march on Washington drew more than 200,000 people in the shadow of Lincoln Memorial. It was here that King made his famous I Have a Dream speech, emphasizing his belief that someday all men could be brothers. This led to the Civil Rights Act of 1964, authorizing the federal government to enforce desegregation of public accommodations and outlawing discrimination in publicly owned facilities. This also led to Martin Luther King receiving the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. See, this next act is what got the black or whatever they want to call us back then, but I'll use it for now. This next pen on the storyline is what brought 
in a nationwide black mentality of letting go and letting God, which brings in a submissiveness of warriors of color to be docile or timid nature of is constantly and it is constantly mistaken for being humble when 95 percent of our people, whatever you want to call us, are passive which is totally against our indigenous nature. But back to the topic at hand. I'm growing tired of history, but I'm almost done. Okay, on March 21st, 1965, approximately 2,000 people began a march from Selma to the capital in Montgomery. On March 25th, the number of marchers, which had grown to an estimated 25,000, gathered in front of the state capitol where Dr. King delivered a televised speech. Five months after the historic peaceful protest, President Johnson signed the 1965 Voting Rights Act from 19 from late 1965 through 1967 Martin Luther King Jr. expanded his civil rights efforts into other larger American cities including Chicago and Los Angeles this is the problem with Chicago and Los Angeles now we're the biggest gang banging and gun slinging cities in America but anyway but he met with increasing criticism and public challenges from young black Power leaders, King's patient, nonviolent approach and appeal to white middle class citizens alienated alienated many black militants who considered his methods too weak, too late, and ineffective. The black militants were Nation of Islam, the more science temple of America, and also the five percenters. See now comes the reason why he was assassinated. King began making a link between discrimination and poverty. And he began to speak out against the Vietnam War. See, that's a big no-no. Never speak out against the white man's war, the European War. Never. He felt that America's involvement in Vietnam was political, politically untenable, and the government's conduct in the war discriminatory to the poor. He sought to broaden his base by forming a multi-race coalition to address economic and unemployment problems of all disadvantaged people. Don't this sound familiar, everybody? This sounds just like the uh, Malcolm X situation where he went abroad and started worrying about overseas stuff and trying to get correlations with mixed groups of people, and the white man don't like that. The devil don't like that. By 1968, the years of demonstrations and confrontations were beginning to wear on Martin Luther King Jr. He had grown tired of marches, going to jail, and living under the constant threat of death. He was becoming discouraged at the slow progress of civil rights in America and the increasing criticism from other African-American leaders. Plans were in the works for another march on Washington to revive his movement and bring attention to a widening range of issues in the spring of 1968 a labor strike by memphis sanitation workers drew king to one last crusade on april 3rd he gave his final and what proved to be an eerily prophetic speech i've been to the mountaintop in which he told supporters at the mason temple in memphis see what is he doing at a masonic temple in memphis he was a mason everybody for people that didn't know he was a prince hall mason I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. The next day, while standing on a balcony outside his room at the Lorraine Motel, Martin Luther King Jr. was struck by a sniper's bullet. In the 1970s, FBI files released under the Freedom of Information Act revealed that he was under government surveillance and suggested his involvement in adulterous relationships and communist influences. See, that's the little game. I got another video where I talk about wiretapping, and I stayed in there that they were watching this man and listening to his phone calls from from 1963 all the way to 1966. I firmly believe from 19... Whenever the man was born to when the man died or disappeared, whether he's dead or not. See, this is just a part of the imagery that was Martin Luther King Jr. He was a Christian, but more than that, he was Christ-like in the form of yet another federal government-made image. All the images of the government have federal holidays. I mention Christian and Christ-like because Christ means to smear, as in smear oil on your forehead or smear ashes on your forehead like mark a cross on you, like... 
smear campaign, like the down talk somebody, to uh, whisper, the backbite, the stuff they talk about in the Quran, or X as an Xmas or unknown mass. Christmas is the real black mass, by the way. But that's another thing for another day. But this is December, so I must let you know that Christmas is a black mass. And everybody participating in it is participating in black magic. After the federal government creates an image and it serves its uses, no matter how good they serve them, how well they portrayed their image, the smear campaign must follow. That's food for thought right there. For anyone who actually listened to the history segment of this video, the conclusion I'm about to state will be redundant. For those who skipped or couldn't discern what I have said, I must state that the federal government constantly creates and destroys images used to convey various messages and set social standards in all communities, in all countries, in all governments. It's the way they govern. Martin Luther King was not his name, but it is the image that is remembered and celebrated, not the man. These images are not new. They have been used since time began. They used the image of Martin Luther King for the sole purpose of making an indigenous warrior race, along with our warrior relatives from Africa, though few as the Africans were out here in America. Through the image of MLK, we were groomed to be submissive and give up our natural warrior warrior selves and our self-sufficiency his dream painted a picture that integration would benefit us when in all actuality it only benefits the conqueror because it wasn't just the immigrant europeans who are now operating under the misnomer of white americans it wasn't only them that segregation that wanted to be segregated we wanted separation it was us the indigenous natives who Wanted and needed segregation to survive and continue. See, through the image of Dr. King, the indigenous were cheated out of America. This desegregation was the biggest blow to the indigenous of this land. It firmly integrated the European immigrant into American culture and society. I know I'm the first to say this, bro. That's because these dudes who are so-called viral on these various platforms are created federal government images themselves. Yeah, I said it and I stand on it and by that. If someone is teaching any school of thought or any group of black, brown, aboriginal, African commission, whatever, any group of anybody, and they aren't exposing the fact that these people be plants and that through imagery, anybody can be anything and anybody, then they are plants and agents and just images themselves, whether they know it or not. Whether they like it or not, I've been offered the path many of times. I won't let myself be fake for nothing. For no amount of money, I refuse to be fake. I'm only me, indigenous realist, and I plan on exposing images created by and for government purposes to control, trick, and train our youth and us, period. The indigenous are on the rise, and I fly high on eagle wings. Some may understand everything I said, but it will fly over a lot of heads. I'm gone. I don't want to say too much and be killed or sacrificed. Not kidding. It's Indigenous Realists. Please like and share this video. Comment section is open to anyone. Positive or negative comments, it doesn't matter. The truth will be told. Either way, truth will be told on my channel. Subscribe and be on the lookout for new videos I have on the way about other images that were created by the conqueror to rule the conquered. I'm gone.